When you see the label there, you might think that Harris Tweed is a garment maker or a fashion designer, but that's not true. Harris Tweed is just a quality fabric. Hi everyone, Christine here from Cherry Vintage, cherryvintage.com. Um, I hadn't planned to make a video today, but I decided to make this impromptu video as a response to Rake and Profit's recent video about what makes his Harris Tweed jacket worth good money or not. And also, it's going to be a response to the Struggleville's recent Harris jacket quiz video. That's right here on my computer. And, um, you know, this is kind of impromptu, so I'm going to have to just illustrate using images off the computer because that's all the time I have, guys. But first, if you're new to my channel, I just want to let you know that I've been collecting, wearing, selling vintage clothes for 30 plus years. So I know many things about clothing, but women's clothing is more my specialty than men's. And I don't know everything about clothing, so if you find an error in any of my information in this video, please let me know, because I'm open to learning about that. Okay, so first I'm going to start with some basics that I believe every clothing reseller should need to know, or should know, <laughs> and um, it's going to pertain as I go along to these two videos and the Harris Tweed jackets. This is a men's jacket, and this is also a men's jacket. A jacket is a hip or waist length garment that covers the upper body, and there's many types of jackets. This video is going to cover just three styles, and in modern times a jacket is either for indoor fashion or for outdoors light covering. So this is a men's coat, and in modern times, most often, a coat refers to an overcoat. It's meant for warmth outside, and you know, in past times, like a hundred years ago, coats were worn inside, but it would be of a different weight. So I'm just, you know, most people nowadays, a coat is going to mean an overcoat. And both men and women wear jackets and coats, and the way to tell the difference between a men's or a woman's is to remember that men's buttons are sewn on the right and women's are sewn on the left. That holds true for shirts and blouses as well. So unless it's kind of a quirky European thing, you know, 90% of the time you're going to find that you can tell if it's a men or a woman because the men, the button will be sewn on or attached on the right and the women's on the left. I don't know how well this is going to show up, but I found this illustration online and it's fairly good. I guess it could be better. But this one is a blazer. This is a sport jacket. This is a suit jacket. And women can wear blazers, sport jackets, although usually they're riding jackets, and a suit, obviously, for work. So take a look at the construction of the one on the left, the blazer. And blazers are lightweight and they're typically solid color and most often you're going to see them as part of a uniform for a business, a club, um, sports teams, or even schools like Ivy League schools and uh, prep schools. But also they're popular with like country clubbers, people with yachts, and people who are into horse sports like uh, polo or racing. So let me give you an example of some that you might have seen before. Okay, here's someone that you've probably seen before. This is um, Thurston Howell III from Gilligan's Island. He's wearing a blazer. That's the type that people who like to yacht wear often. It's kind of classic navy, lightweight. Um, I think when you get closer you can see that it has metal buttons. Sometimes they're gold or silver. silver. They usually look kind of brass. And then they usually wear like a silk scarf there. Here's another blazer that's uh, Prince Charles, and he's often seen in a blazer. His is a double-breasted blazer. That's hard to say. <laughs> when you see these two sets of uh, buttons there. Okay, going back to this diagram, the one in the center there, that's the sport jacket. And that's more of a classic English tweed jacket. And that design is window pane plaid. Um, but something to note on here, this is what you often see, is that you're going to have double flap. This is a suit, so you see one false flap. And here, there's usually a double flap, and 
sometimes, not always, but often, I would say often, <clears throat> there's a, um actual pocket there when it's a real sport coat made for going out and hunting, fishing, birding. I wish I had a larger picture of this. But this is a classic, classic English style um, tweed sport coat. And it's like a three, they call it a three season. See, again, there's the pocket. It's not a false pocket, it's a true pocket with a flap. And sometimes it doesn't show up here, but they have, um, sometimes you'll see a button so it can cross over on this one. It doesn't, but here's the elbow patches, which helps so the elbows don't wear out when you're using it for uh, hunting. And then there's two vents on either side here, and that is to make, you know, ease when you get on a horse. And I don't see it, but sometimes you'll see one where there's a flap here, and then there's like one or two little flaps there, and those are extra flap ticket pockets. Here's another person who often wore tweed sport jackets, especially in the early 60s. This is Bob Dylan, and you can see that it's a sport jacket, not a suit jacket, because if you look at the collar, and then over here there's a flange on either side, and the flange is really common in um, hunting jackets and then also in sport jackets. Here's another person who often wears tweed sport jackets. This is actor Woody Allen. And you can see down here, this is a real pocket, not a false pocket, because it's bulging with some stuff in there, and there's the big flap that's common with the tweed sport jackets. And look at this, he's rocking some uh, saddle shoes. Okay, taking a look at this little illustration again. This one right here is a suit jacket that would come with a pair of trousers. So, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory, but I'll show you so. Okay, this is a modern suit jacket, and I don't know what I can tell you about it, <laughs> except for it's usually less boxy than the, um, the uh, sport jacket and the blazer. And you can see, I don't know if it shows up on here, but there's a seaming uh, line in here that makes it a little more fitted, and they often have a front, usually two, for balance, false flap, pocket and also a chest pocket. This is just one woman's opinion, but I think there's at least two good reasons why maybe a, a reseller would want to stop calling all men's jackets blazers. Because first, using the correct term will help your eBay buyer to find the item when you use the right keywords. And my theory is that customers who are willing to pay $100 or more for a garment, they likely care about fashion enough to know the real difference between a sport jacket and a blazer, so they would type in, as a search term, sport jacket. So if you only put blazer in there, it's not likely that they're going to find your item. And most men who spend that amount of cash on clothes, their wardrobe is going to have many more sport jackets in it than blazers because as I've shown you blazers you know they tend to have that polo look or nautical look and whatnot where a sport jacket is just much more applicable to everyday city wear or outdoor country wear than a blazer is and my second reason is is that it's professional to use correct terminology and if you decide to resell clothing full-time and being seen as a professional encourages your buyer's confidence. I think that the problem that some pickers are having in our YouTube community is that they're confused about what uh, Harris Tweed actually is. When you see the label there, you might think that Harris Tweed is a garment maker or a fashion designer, but that's not true. Harris Tweed is just a quality fabric and that label certifies that it's genuine Harris Tweed from Scotland. So my answer for you is based on experience and logical deduction and I believe the reason why some Harris Tweed jackets sell for hundreds of dollars even though they're used on eBay and some only sell for fifteen to thirty dollars um, primarily has to do with the designer or 
the store maker, such as J. Crew. The style and cut, and the quality of the Harris tweed fabric, because the lower quality, the easier made fabric doesn't require, like the herringbone, doesn't require as much variety of um, thread. I think it's thread that they use. I was going to say yarn, but I'm not sure. Fiber. Let's call it fiber. And all, some of the designs are very complex, and they also, different designers, such as Vivian Westwood, have contracts with Harris Tweed, so they may very well get their own plaids made um, by Harris Tweed, and then it's very exclusive. But then I'd say finally, a little bit of it depends on the size of the jacket. We know that larger sizes sell well, but also a little bit of it is going to depend upon the eBay seller themselves. The half line jackets are for warmer weather. Yeah, let's see. This side says Harris Tweed hand woven 100% pure Scottish wool. And there's a tag up here that says Union Made in USA. By okay, that Harris Tweed label is from 1975, at least till the 90s. It might even still be used. And they have the earlier um, labels look different, but this video is going to be too long if I go into all that. And the brand name is American Craftsman, and I'm not familiar with that name, but I went and I looked it up on TESS. That's capital T, capital E, t capital S, capital S. And that's the um, trademark. Um, Trademark electronic system. I'm sorry, I can't remember it all, but I should do a whole video just on that. But what you can do is you can look up the trademarks of different companies. And so, let me see, I wrote it down for you. They were in business from 1983 to 1992. So, your jacket is between the 80s and the 90s, so you technically you could put it in the vintage category if you want to. Those two pockets front pockets. If they are real pockets, you can stick your hands in them and they're lined, then you would call them front flap pockets. If they're just a flap and they're fake, there's no real pocket there, then you would call them false flap front pocket. That's hard to say. Now those buttons, are they real leather? Because the good stuff has real leather buttons, and the lower end items have kind of a fake one where they just duplicate that kind of texture, but there's no real leather there. I cut off the video right here because from what I see from both of your jackets, they're not blazers, they're not sport jackets, they're suit jackets. And if anyone disagrees with me, I'd like to hear about it, but I really believe but they are both suit jackets, so will that impact the uh, resale price on there? I think it kind of will make it a little less because most people don't wear a suit jacket without the trousers. But you never know. You know, I feel I would look through the completeds, you might get fifteen to thirty dollars, um, which I think is what you expected to get on that, and then. I was going to tell you too, the collar, when it has a little divot in it, that is a notched collar. You could put that in there if you want to too. And the other maker that has an M and it's a Dominic Republic, that is not um, well known, you know, so I don't think that that would increase the value at all. Okay, so I did a search for Harris Tweed Sport Jacket completed. So here's the ones you want to be on the lookout for. If you want a home run item, this is Ralph Lauren Harris Tweed. J. Crew. So Ralph Lauren was about 540. J. Crew, someone took a best offer, less than 300. J. Crew, this one was less than 300. Let's see, that has the more traditional English hunting style. And if it has the leather patches on the elbow, all the better. 
see it has the big pockets there. Let's see what else we have here quickly. Some names to look for. Mario Baruti, not familiar with that name. Well, you look at the Land's End, got 150. There's plenty of those around. So that gives you an idea of what to look for, hopefully. Dun & Co, I've heard of them. That was 129. So yeah, there's some good things if you just search through to see what you need to look for is really a brand name and a good design and the uh, Harris Tweed. And notice too down here, like I said, not necessarily the herringbone always sells well because that's not a her herringbone and that's definitely not a herringbone. They're more complicated designs. Well, this video is plenty long enough, so I'm going to say goodbye for now. Thanks for dropping by and watching. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to do that. I appreciate it. Thanks for participating in this conversation. If you leave some comments, I'm happy to read them and I'll try to respond to them. I hope to see you again soon. Take care.